Ever since I made the Audio-Technica LP140 XP turntable, my reference setup, I haven't really been tempted to make a change. Until maybe now. Let's see if Dual's brand new CS618Q turntable has what it takes to get me to consider a new record player in 2022. <laughs> Now the 618 features a rumble-free, quartz-stabilized direct drive motor with support for 33, 45, and 78 RPM albums. While the 618 is a manual design, it also has auto stop with auto tone arm lift capability, which is nice. Speaking of the tone arm, it is crafted from aluminum and features a removable head shell that comes pre-mounted with an Ortofon 2M blue cartridge from the factory. I like removable head shells like the one found on the Dual. It makes swapping out cartridges rather easy. Other notable features include a folded MDF plinth finished in black, gloss black, or walnut veneer. The 618 also has a built-in phono preamp, which you can choose to use or defeat at the flip of a switch. The 618 is a very well-sorted turntable. It definitely has CS5000 vibes, which was Dual's top-of-the-line turntable back in the mid-80s. I think the 618 is quite striking visually. I prefer it in its walnut finish to the black or gloss black that I have seen online. The speed control is easy to understand and operate, though don't expect your record to start spinning as soon as you select the correct speed for your album. Lifting the tone arm and moving the pickup over your record will get things moving. Adjusting the dual for either the included Ortofon cartridge or an aftermarket one is a breeze thanks to its arm design. And I love the included phono preamp and the fact that it can be defeated should you have a better standalone phono preamp elsewhere in your setup. Now, before I jump into the Duel's performance, my review is going to be based on the table in its stock configuration. This includes relying on its built-in phono preamp in some situations, as well as its included cartridge. We've paired it with a wide range of equipment with great results. Everything from the more budget-friendly Cambridge Audio AXR100 stereo receiver, as well as our Audiolab 6000A Play and Omnia amplifiers, to our costlier Musical Fidelity M5SI. And it should go without saying, the 618 slayed when connected to the Macintosh 7200 stereo receiver. And while all of these integrated amps or stereo receivers have phono preamps built in, I did compare the Dual's built-in preamp to that of those found inside our various amps. My takeaway about the Dual's built-in phono preamp is this. If your existing integrated amp, receiver, or outboard phono preamp retails for somewhere between, say, $200 and $500, there is a good chance you will hear little to no difference in the Dual sound when relying on its built-in phono preamp versus using the one you may already own. Of course, every preamp and situation is bound to be just a little bit different, but on the whole, the 618's built-in phono preamp is competitive, with solutions costing upwards of about $500. Bucks. But if you have an integrated amp along the lines of, say, the 6000A Play or better, you're likely going to enjoy subtle but appreciable gains in sound quality using their phono preamps rather than relying on the one built into the Dual. If you have a truly reference-level phono preamp, you should definitely use that one over the built-in one. Now, the biggest improvements I could discern when moving up market in terms of the phono preamp were improved definition, clearer detail retrieval, better, more dimensional dynamics, and a mildly lower noise floor. Again, when using the stock 2M Blue cartridge. Of course, if you change out the cartridge for a higher end option, like my reference 2M Black LVB, you should expect improvements across the board, at which point I would say a better third-party phono preamp is an absolute must. Now, in terms of overall sound quality, the Dual is solid. This is not an overly warm, mellow, or romanticized setup. It's more precise, agile, and articulate through its frequency response in comparison to the Project Debut Pro and its stock Sumiko Rainier cartridge. The 2M Blue used with the Dual has demonstrably more resolute bass with good texture and detail compared to the Project, though, it lacks the absolute depth of my Audio-Technica outfitted with the far costlier 2M Black LVB cartridge, also from Ortofon. Skipping the built-in phono preamp inside the Dual for something a bit more higher end in some instances resulted in mild gains in bass depth, but on the whole, the 2M Blues bass is solid, better than most, but not exactly equal to cartridges retailing for well over twice as much. Now, with respect to mid-range, again, the 2M Blue is far more linear, more neutral compared to the warmer, richer, and rounder tone of the Sumiko. 
I prefer the blue's precision and ability to shed light on nearly every inflection and nuance locked within the grooves of my favorite records. Coldplay's album Rush of Blood to the Head sounded especially good on the duel. The track Scientist, which features Martin playing a slightly worn out and out of tune upright piano, was rendered brilliantly through the duel, possessing an organic textural quality that I only really experience when listening to this song on vinyl. The subtle, dreary warble of the notes shined through with terrific separation from Martin's own vocals and harmonies. While my 2M Black LVB cartridge does manage to extract even more from each groove, the 2M Blue is up to the task and once again illustrates to me why it is the cartridge to beat when weighing price and performance. Now, highs are articulate and refined, though with some albums, the 2M Blue is not above showcasing some sibilance. While the Sumiko Rainier cartridge may not have the same top-end extension as the Blue, it is a bit airier and smoother, which I sometimes prefer. With good recordings, the Blue is what you no doubt want. But if you've got a record with a fair amount of compression in the mix already, for example, Pray for the Wicked by Panic at the Disco, I wouldn't fault one for preferring the mildly more subdued and laid-back stylings of the project and its Sumiko cartridge. But Feed the Duel, a good recording, and the 2M Blue absolutely shines. Soundstage definition is very good, with solid detail and separation able to be enjoyed throughout. The 2M Blue does bring the performance forward just a bit compared to the Sumiko, though not enough to make the music sound forward or shouty. The Duel simply has a mildly livelier sound compared to the project. Dynamics are snappy, though I will admit my 2M Black cartridges have really spoiled me with respect to dynamics, as it is one of, if not, their biggest strengths in comparison to either cartridges. But if you value soundstage delineation and strong dynamics, but you don't want to throw loads of money to get arguably the best of both, then the Duel and its 2M Blue cartridge is a great overall choice. What I love most about the Duel, however, isn't its sound. Admittedly, it's not a sound that is wholly new to me, or any of you who may have, say, a Fluence RT85 or a similar turntable with a 2M Blue fitted from the factory. No, what I love about the Duel is its functionality. The speed control is fantastic, not to mention easy to understand, unlike the Project. It also saves you the hassle of having to manually adjust belts as well. I also appreciate the auto stop and arm lift feature, as I can't always drop everything that I'm doing to lift the arm when the needle reaches the end of an album. While I would have preferred the duel to return the arm to its cradle, I'll take auto lift over nothing. But the duel isn't perfect. I wish the finish was more matte than gloss, especially considering the Duel's price. Compared to the Project X1, the Duel's plinth, while dense and well-made, looks cheaper than I would have liked. I think the platter could be a little better. Don't get me wrong, performance-wise, it's absolutely fine. But stylistically, it's a bit drab, dare I say cheaper looking too. In terms of comparisons, I've already made a few throughout this video, so I don't want to waste too much time here. Compared to the roughly $1,000 Project Debut Pro, I'd rather have the Duel, even though it costs a little bit more out of the gate. I prefer the Duel for two reasons. One, the Ortofon 2M Blue cartridge, in my opinion, is just, it's just better than the Sumiko Rainier cartridge you get with the Project. And second, I like direct drive turntables. For my money, the ease and convenience of a good direct drive turntable is going to win me over every time. Both are good tables, mind you, but in my opinion, the Duel offers more by way of performance and features for the money. I would also consider the Duel to be a worthy upgrade to the Fluence RT85, so long as you put a premium on having a built-in phono preamp, better speed control, direct drive convenience, and auto stop. Because sound-wise, when using the same external phono preamp, there is little to no difference in sound quality between the two, thanks to them both using the 2M Blue cartridge. But the real question is, am I going to swap out my Audio-Technica for the Duel? I prefer the look of the Duel to my Audio-Technica, hands down. I also love that it has a built-in phono preamp and auto stop. God, do I love that feature. But I'm going to stick with my Audio-Technica for now. Not because it's demonstrably better or worse than the Duel, it, it's not. But because my reasons for potentially changing to the Duel aren't exactly performance based, which isn't enough to justify having yet another turntable in this house. Now, if I was on the market for a new turntable and I didn't already have a great option in my Audio Technica, then the Duel would most definitely be on my list. 
thoroughly enjoyed my time with the Duel. It offers a lot of performance and features for the money. Is it the turntable to beat at this price point? No, but it is a solid option and ranks high among other turntables currently retailing for between, say, $1,000 and $1,500 or so. Like I said, if I didn't already own a plethora of tables and was looking for a solid kit under $1,500, the Duel would definitely be on my short list. So that's it, that is now my review of the Dual CS618Q turntable, but now it's time to find out real quick if Christy liked it. I did. Yeah? It's a nice table. I think it's great. I yeah. mean, look, it's a turntable. Okay. And I just, mm, I don't know what really what to say about it. I okay. mean, I agree with everything you said in your review. Mm -hmm. I honestly, I don't have a whole lot to add. Um, I I think it looks great. It worked, it worked perfectly as yeah. you described. It sounded good. Mm -hmm. um, Not much to complain about. Really, there really isn't. I mean, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't have something, you know. No, I mean, really that, extra to add. Yeah, but I mean that that to me is one of the things that tells me a product is well sorted and good. But it also is like, you know, you you hope you hope to come across a product, you know, every now and then where it's just like it does its job. You know, it does its job. Is it the greatest that thing out there? No, but it's not embarrassed and it's definitely not, uh, you know, taking anyone for a ride. It's just a very solid option. And I would not be surprised if people were to pick this over, say, the project or even pick this over like a Techniques uh, 1500C, which is about 15, 1600 bucks. But you get that uh, 2M red cartridge, which, you know, I don't like. So the Duel's giving you more for your money in that respect um, and is incredibly competitive. So. Yeah, I think it really comes down to maybe it when when, when you're talking about a, a, a turntable at this level, it's, I think it starts to come down to maybe stylistic preferences. Sure. You know, somebody that's looking at the techniques, techniques, however you say it, um, <laughs> is probably looking at that, A, because it's a brand that they have nostalgia for. Oh, yeah. And they like that more vintage vibe. The heritage of the it. Her yeah. yeah. And whereas I think that the Duel is a really classic looking, but it also has a bit of, um, it looks more like a little bit more like a piece of furniture. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's very, it's very nice. It's very stylish. Yeah. Um, it would fit with in a wide ver variety of, um, of homes like de home decor. The, the project, I mean, I would definitely get this over the project because I don't want to fuss with all the manual aspects yeah. of the of a turntable that's just I, I don't need vinyl in my life that bad <laughs> but uh so i'm with you like if something mm -hmm. is more of an you know I, I really miss the days of fully automatic turntables like, oh god I what do the too. heck happened i do too but but yeah it's a great option great 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 design yeah no I agree. no issues with it Anyway, so that is now our review of the Dual CS618Q turntable. What did you guys think? Let us know down in the comments below. And while you're down there, I've got a question of the day for you. And that is, are you excited to see Dual back in the game? And what have been your favorite Dual products over the years? I really want to know because Dual's a brand I have been aware of for some time, but admittedly, I haven't had a number of their products come across uh, my desk, if you will, in my hi-fi journey. So clue me in. What dual products should I keep an eye out for, maybe for like a future video? I want to know. Uh, if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Go ahead and ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. If you use any of the links Christy left for you down below, know that that is a great way that you have continued to show your support for this channel and the work that we do here. And we both thank you all very much for doing that. Follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audiophile. And that is it for us today. So remember, the only person who has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video. Bye.